This is Hanging Heavy. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hanging Heavy. <laughs> I'm your boy Desecrator, and today I've got the man with nothing but fire cards in his hand. We're talking about the one, the only garbage fire. Yo, what's up, Scrappus? And as always, coming and bringing it around the rear. The man, when it's dark, you gotta fear. The one, the only. Puppy Ray. <laughs> uh, that, that sound gets me every single time. I know. I want to know how he doesn't. I want to know how it oh. feels. Oh, you know how it feels. <laughs> Shh. Don't tell anybody. <clears throat> well, uh, as it is... Uh, custom around here. Do you guys have your shot ready? Yep. Yes. Alright, let's 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 down this bitch. Oof. Good old hot rich and rare. Three, two, one. Oof. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not too hot. <laughs> so it's staying cold. What kind of shot did you have, Garbage? Uh, I went back to Apple since I'm about to drink garbage in a bit. Apple? Apple? Jim Bean. Oh. You know, like, Crown has an apple. Mm hmm I think Crown is already too sweet. So, yeah. given that an apple taste is kind of like, hey, let's get a... It's good if Isn't you... Isn't it a sour apple? It's or green apple. apple. Green apple. Yeah. It's good if you put it in, like, in Sprite or maybe even just... Mineral water or whatever, carbonated water. Oof. Yeah, make it, make it taste like a white claw. Oh, hey, when you're drinking white claws, there are no laws. <laughs> That's so stupid. Rain. Neither, neither is good taste. <laughs> hey, but it's gluten free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, guys. Take it easy. It wasn't that good of a joke. I'm not uh, a few years in, so I need to use a good joke already. Oh, thanks. Oh, whoa. calm down. <laughs> um, so you were saying you were going to drink some garbage. Can you go ahead and elaborate <laughs> on that? Oh, this. So I went to uh, our local. Uh, liquor store or massive chain, whatever you want to call it. And I asked this guy to give me like, give me two sour beers. Um, so obviously the first one was good. Sour monkey, something I've been drinking for a while already. And then he points me to this thing called uh, stone delicious IPA. Obviously I did not read it. I just grabbed the box, took it to register. It wasn't until I took my first Excuse sip me. of this thing that I realized it was not a sour. Ooh, let's have a live taste test. Oh my god. <laughs> Am I regretting it? Are you pouring it out or are you drinking it from the can? Oh, I'm not a I'm not a Neanderthal, no, no savage. I'm, I'm pouring not a it into my savage. I'm pouring it into my little twelve ounce glass right here. Mm. It's one of those Yeti kind of glass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, it looks fucking delicious but then after I take my first sip smell it oh maybe it smells like horrible hangover <laughs> oh, what's your, oh, that's the aroma that's the floral notes that you're getting off the hops mm. you know the hops is a flower <laughs> <laughs> mm, sounds delicious <laughs> oh, this is fucking horrible dude what does it Ooh. taste what does it taste like uh, exactly. <laughs> I, 
I think you described it perfect. What did it smell like? Were you like... Uh, <laughs> oh, ooh. <laughs> That's a skunky smell, man. And, oh. I, and we've drank Corona. I can I can smell Corona and be okay with this. This is just... I just don't want to throw away 10 bucks on the drain. So I'm going to finish it, man. But, you know, I didn't even realize it. I was describing it earlier. Uh, obviously, the can is upside down. It has a little devil face on it. Uh, and I, I think with just <coughs> description, I would have definitely not bought in it. So it's uh, gluten-reduced. Citrusy lemon drop hops, tropical El Dorado hops, seven point seven alcohol by body. Whoa! Tomorrow you're gonna be like, no. Um, I think I'd rather drink moonshine or Everclear than this. Have you ever yeah. had moonshine? Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, legal kind. Yes, the legal. Oh. I'm not gonna say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say fuck it. Like, uh, a long time ago, uh, a long time ago, my dad he works on the railroad, right? So he travels a lot sometimes. And uh, he was in Louisiana for a good while, and he told me that uh, some old fucking like hillbilly looking motherfucker would drive by the site and see a bunch of fucking pelaos and chongos doing work, right? So he would pull up with his fucking like a uh, oh. Like, one of those farmer market wooden crates with fucking hay and shit in it. Like, legit, legit fucking bootlegging. And he's like, hey, y'all want some moonshine? (laughs) (laughs) And my dad's like, fuck, sure, fuck it, why not? And he brought, like, three or four mason jars home. And, man, those sat in the fucking refrigerator for so long. Um... So, for any of you that don't know what moonshine is, moonshine is essentially just uh, unaged whiskey, right? It's grain alcohol that are not aged in barrels or whatever. And for the most part, uh, it's proofed by I, I guess. Like, there's no... Oh, shit. I mean, people that make it usually make it out in the backwoods and shit, so they don't have all this fucking precise instrument measurements and shit they're just doing it by by eye and by memory right in the woods trying not to get arrested so a lot of the time it's fucking high high proof like think of everclear everclear is like a really popular grain alcohol that shit's i think 90 percent i think it's like 180 proof or some bullshit that shit will fucking peel wallpaper off of the wall. <laughs> I, I know there's not too many people that have wallpaper anymore, but <laughs> you get the idea, right? That's, that's fucking almost paint thinner. <laughs> oh, fuck. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so, like, ooh, you just get, you, that's that's why you sip moonshine. You mm, give a little, mm, little kiss goodnight, you know? <laughs> that's, that's not shit that you're pounding all day. Or pounding all night, excuse me. You fucking give it a little kiss and put it away. Come, come back about 30 minutes. I kind of want to try it. You know, kind of the, the stories that you hear. You know, that kind of moonshine that makes you lose your eyesight kind of shit. Oh, dude, no. That's just because it has the wrong kind of alcohol in it. I think, what, it methanol? Methanol is the alcohol that fucks you up instead of ethanol. Oh, um, that's so... <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, speaking of that, I was reading. So, the only way to counteract methanol poisoning is to consume ethanol. So, fucking, if you're succumbing to methanol poisoning, you have to get shit-faced to, like, counteract it. Like, that's the only thing that cancels it out. So, you're already fucking feeling like shit slowly being poisoned. And then you have to get drunk on top of that? Fuck that. That's So sucks. if you're going to drink some of the, you know, wood, uh, um, some moonshine from the woods, and you don't know how safe it is, go get Everclear? That's mm-hmm. what you're trying to tell me? Pretty much, yeah. Have anything, <laughs> anything that has ethyl alcohol, and you'll be all right. Or ethanol, not ethyl. Because ethyl <laughs> stuff, that, that's rubbing alcohol and shit. You, you, you. Nowadays, the weirdest substances are like, as you said, right? Like they take down wallpaper. Uh, we were trying to clean a 
random story, but kind of tied to that. We were trying to clean a, a board, but some person decided to put, like, on the, those whiteboards, mm-hmm. they decided to put some chemical cleaner that they use for, like, the restrooms or whatnot. So <laughs> it took off that, that shine. Oh, on top of... they fucking melted the surface. Yeah, they melted the surface, right? So you still saw white. So we still had some people that still tried to use, the uh, you know, dry erase markers. Yeah, but everything stuck. Everything stuck. So yeah. we actually, <laughs> this is the messed up part. We got like toothpaste, <laughs> that that minty toothpaste. All we did was like we poured it all over it. We let it sit for a couple of minutes and it came off like nothing. And I'm like, dude, we're washing our teeth with this. This is taking marker off of a dead whiteboard. Like, what the hell are we putting in our mouths? Well, you, you know how toothpaste works, right? Have you seen that whole penny experiment with the toothpaste? Well, a, a lot of toothpaste has abrasive in it. So it's like yeah. uh, sandpaper, essentially. What the hell? Yeah, I mean, that's the only way you're going to clean your teeth. What the fuck? Oh. But, like, it's the particles are so fine. And, like, the fluoride is supposed to help uh, rejuvenate whatever you take off with the toothpaste or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, essentially, you're just filing your teeth. Oh, well, I learned something new today. That's why, like, uh, I don't know, for those those old heads that remember CDs, there was a CD cleaner hack that you would use toothpaste <laughs> yeah. to take scratches out. And that's, that's the reason why. You could use it to also clean your headlights. Uh-huh, yeah, exactly, for the same reason. It's got some, it, but not all of the toothpaste, not the gel type, like just the white. No, yeah, yeah you, need, you need the paste. Not you need the, the paste, gel. yeah, not the gel. That's right, that's right. Because that stuff has like a, some kind of abrasive compound in it or some shit. Where I used to work, there was this guy for hustling. He was a hustler. You know, he, had, he worked there with us. Since he was part time, <clears throat> he would tell people he'll clean the headlights for like 10, 20 bucks. And before he went to work to clock in, he would be outside like an hour or two in the parking lot cleaning people's headlights for like 10, 20 bucks with toothpaste. It's, uh, and a whole lot of elbow <laughs> grease, I bet. Yep. Fuck, man. Okay, so speaking of that, I don't know if you guys remember me talking about how I was going to build a base. Yeah. Well, I finished it this week. Here, I'm going to put pictures in the in the chat. Uh, fuck, why do they go horizontal? Whatever. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. But yeah. Uh, I finished it yesterday. Like, after midnight. <coughs> fucking, I think I sanded that thing down for like fucking four hours. My fucking arm still hurts. Like, my shoulder, my fucking upper arm, and my elbow are fucking... <laughs> Sore like a motherfucker. Looks nice, man. Yeah, and I mean, it it's a base, a build your own base kit. I mean, you can buy them on eBay. I but that's where I bought mine. I bought it for eighty bucks. <clears throat> and I mean, it came out looking pretty fucking fresh. I'm not gonna lie. But the thing that I was impressed about is how it sounded. It actually sounds pretty damn good. And like, I have a clip I recorded before we started. Recording, it's like fucking three seconds, but it it sounds nice. Like this is with no editing on it, simply just uh, me plugging it into my interface and like whatever fucking bullshit get bass amp that it had on. But look, look, check it out. I think it sounds fucking crispy. Yeah, it actually sounds. Uh, there's no distortion towards the end. It sounds very. It's super sounds... clean for. Yeah, I was about to say that. And like, I had to redo the wiring because it came from China and the wiring was all fucked up. So I, I looked up schematics for those type of pickups that are in it, and I redid it because like the wiring was backwards or whatever. I'm pretty sure it would have worked the way it came, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I mean, some some of the some of those uh, like you say, like off-brand stuff, uh, ends up sounding a lot, you know, cleaner. Yeah. Because they're trying, to, they're trying to make a name for themselves. People, yeah. You, you can tell like a company is trying to do something. They're, nice. Yeah, they're trying to like prove their worth. Yeah, it's kind of like I remember like 
Vizio when I was um, mm -hmm. dang about 15, 17 years ago, man. Like it was a super off the brand thing, and now Vizios are actually, you know, at least a standard for the industry. <coughs> so I mean, hell yeah, man. Yeah, the the only thing. So it's in the style of a Fender jazz bass. I've always nice. wanted one, but they're like the good ones are expensive, and I'm not gonna buy a cheap one, right? I mean, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did you just I mean, you? I did. And that maroon one in the back? Is it red? Oh, the red one? No, it's a five string. And uh, it, like, I have two five strings. And this one is like, the one that's out here, it's a fucking shit one. Uh, and like, that's the one that I just leave outside. Like, if it fucking breaks, I don't give a fuck, right? My good one is inside, like with my guitar. My good guitar. Well, it doesn't sound cheap, man. Well, well, this one, yeah, I'm surprised it didn't. I put new strings on it. Even the strings that it came with sounded pretty good, but they were garbage because they weren't staying in tune because mm. they were cheap. But yeah, it, it sounds pretty fucking amazing for 80 bucks. I won't be able to buy a Fender for, I mean, invested total amount, I'd probably say like 150. Mm. I wouldn't. I don't think I'll find a Fender for 150. That's in a color that I like. It's in the dime slime. That's true. But yeah, the only thing that I'm not used to is like it's a jazz bass, right? So the fucking neck is fat, and fucking uh, the frets are like super extra jumbo. Like I have big hands, and like the frets are still kind of a little too big for me, you know. Like so, so this this you you played a lot of music like have you ever played jazz or attempted to at least like mm -hmm. see what the buzz about jazz was? Nah. I mean, I respect jazz, but it's not it's not my it's not my thing. So aside from metal, what what else have you ever played? Like funk, and blues. Mm. Funk, really? A little R and B, I guess. Mm. I mean, those are all bass heavy. Musics. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, a, a lot of uh, uh, bass techniques are really big in funk, like the pop and slap, the pom 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 pom. Oh, that's true. So yeah, I mean, Bootsy Collins, he looks fucking crazy as fuck, but he's a fucking solid bass player. There's a there's a reason why that motherfucker's a bass god. But yeah, I mean, a, a lot of a lot of bass stuff is super rhythmic too, right? So, like for me, that's the way I like to play. I'm more filling in rhythm than lead bass, I guess. I'm not good at all. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I just play what I think feels right and sounds good, right? Ooh, do I feel right when you play me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I... When I feel you, I just hear. Ah, <laughs> 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 chiquillos. That's the fucking bass. Yeah, I'm like, I'm proud of it too, because I mean, dude, I fucking, I put in like. Like um, how? How? Why did you set it so much? Because it was just not round, or. Well, what? yeah, yeah. So like. I don't have like a professional spray booth or anything. So when you use spray paint, like I, I, I hand stained it, but to put the clear coat on it, I mean, I don't have a professional spray gun or whatever to where like I can spray it on smooth and it'll dry smooth. Right. So when you use spray paint, uh, a lot of the times if, if you're not spraying right, or if the conditions aren't perfect, you get a, like a texture and that texture is called orange peel because it looks like the surface of an orange like it's bumpy and it's yeah. not smooth so you uh, look so you, you so okay yeah you sprayed it then you 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 smoothed it yeah you 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 spray it and then you sand down all the high spots right so that that's how you get that super gloss look yeah it's like it's like model cars that's why yeah 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 look. essentially yeah. the same they do that in in auto body work yeah. All the time, the their version of it, it's called cut and buff. But yeah, it's essentially the same thing. 
Do I had a sander for reaching guy to talk. I had a sand machine. I, oh, yeah, I, I have sanders, but uh, the thing with that is, like, the clear coat is so thin that if you oh. use a power if you use a power tool or, like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So if, if you use a power tool, it's real easy to cut through all the clear and start getting back to the wood. Yeah. And that's what I was afraid of. I did that in a couple spots, but it's on the back, so I don't give a shit. Uh, in the back, I didn't even touch it. Like I didn't even maybe, sand the back of the sand. I just left the back. I left it textured. I don't give a fuck. Or, or maybe the power tool. Dude. If you had a power tool, they have those attachments and they have uh, like levels of power tools. So you mm. maybe could use a slow one. Yeah, I don't have one of those. I'm an oh. adjustable, a variant, a very a variant speed sander or whatever the fuck. Yeah, I don't. I don't have one of those. But yeah, it took me fucking forever. <laughs> it was because like you sand like for me I sanded first at 800 grit which is already super fine so I'm not taking a lot of the clear coat off so like you just have to fucking sand the fuck out of it forever but I went 800 to 1000 to 1500 to 2000 to 3000 so I mean, that's five times sanding just the front <sighs> Fuck, dude. <I'm> t- <laughs> like, dude, my arm hurts. <laughs> like, when I was done, I was just like, fuck, I can't pick anything up. Like, right now, I'm still, still a little sore, but yeah, it's better than yesterday. Hey, man, all that practice on Ray finally oh. paid off. No, this lasted longer than Ray. Oh, hey! <laughs> you're so good, puppy. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, but yeah, for me, like, it, it's not perfect, but I like that it's not perfect because I did it. It's it's yours, man. Yeah, That's ultimately yeah. what it is. It's it's your take. It's gonna be who you are. Uh, eventually, like, I'll, maybe I'll upgrade it, but for what it's worth, I'm happy with it. And yeah, like you say, it's mine. <sighs> I, just, it, it, I think it's too chromey the knob, so. Yeah. No. I agree, but it's because traditionally, like, the, the knobs are black. Mm. And, I mean, since this is a cheap piece of shit thing from China, they just chromed it real cheap and sent it out, right? So, but, I mean, the, the, but, no, the knobs, I can buy black ones. Yeah, that's no problem. But can you just, like, uh, use, like, a finish to just take off the chrome? I mean, yeah, I could, like, spray paint over it, but. I mean, no, it... so, well, so, I, like, random thing, right? And and I, I always go back to, to the geek site, like, only because you learn a bunch of shit like that. Like, there's a bunch of, like, painting minis and all the stuff that that is out there that mm-hmm. they, they use, like, different finishes. Like, obviously, it's, like, whatever you want to give it, like, like kind of like, you know, Poppy Ray said it, right? Like, oh, it's too chromey. So mm-hmm. you can do, like, some of those paint finishes. Uh, and I, for, I was just watching a video on it last time. Like, if you want to not leave a shine, you can use, like, a little spray paint or, like, this small wax that they use. And it takes that away. So, there's so many things. A lot of the stuff that you're saying, like, this uh, scrapmanship out there kind of, like, started cascading into, like, so many different, uh, I want to say, uh, fields, right? That you can actually not even search for, not necessarily guitars, but, like... Mm-hmm. A finish on a plastic model, yeah, 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 can sometimes be cross used with this, and you start making it again, even adding more of that desecrator kind of take on it, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So like, if it's metal, you can just sand it, and it'll take mm-hmm. away the the shine. It'll look like brushed aluminum or steel or whatever. Oh, that would look better. Yeah, I was about to say. But, it's actually a hell of a finish. But since these are like cheap, it's cheap metal. So if I sand it, it's pink underneath. It's pot metal. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I had to sand under the bridge. Like the bridge is where the strings uh, go into the end, just so that I could grind, uh, ground it, the electronics. Because if not, it's gonna be buzzing like a motherfucker. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, I I sanded the bottom and I got through the chrome and immediately it was like fucking brass, or fucking uh... cheap metal, right? I mean that's well, how yeah. that's how they make so many so cheap. So it's easier just to replace it. Yeah, it yeah, it's it's easier just to buy better parts for it. That's how it stays at at eighty bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it stays affordable. <laughs> hey, but now it's like hundred fifty or two hundred. Fuck, you could sell it. 
Yeah, I could. But this one's mine. Mm-hmm. We're gonna start seeing like in three months from now, desecrated lion. I mean, I would love to, but fuck, <laughs> dude. I have to, it, it's too much work, man. Fuck yeah, that. If you find the right tool to sand it. Yeah, I yeah, think. that's true. That's true. If I like learn the right method and whatever. For right. for me, it was just a project that I've always wanted to do, and I finally did it. There's a high premium on a lot of stuff like that. Like it's, he you said yourself, right? It's, it's not not that it's hard. It's, it was just hard work, right? Mm-hmm. So have have you guys ever seen a uh, pixel beats? Yeah, pixel art. Yes, yeah, pixel art, right? So yeah. pixel art of you know classic Mario's and everything else. I I looked into it one time and it's super cheap. Like they'll sell you like the oh yeah ten thousand ten thousand beats for like ten bucks or something like that, right? But the fact that you have to like find the thing and then place item by item, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it, it's like, super easy, but it's super meticulous. Yeah, it's like fuck this, dude. Like I'll yeah. pay you the twenty five bucks. I'll, just I'll, 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 I'll pay, I'll pay you thirty just for you to do it. Yeah, and it's it's weird how we value our our time, our time, yeah. our time like that. It's like it would have taken us probably an hour. But we're willing to pay that twenty dollar premium to have it just now. Cause we're, yeah, because we're lazy as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, <laughs> that's uh, the beauty of capitalism, dude. Uh, fucking. If there's something that you want and you think it's not out there, it's probably out there. Uh, I found something random. I found on. Uh, have you guys ever seen Resident Evil? Yeah. The well, which one? Or the game? Like, the OG movie, like the first one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah yes. So, um, you know those vials that they had that they looked beautiful the, in the movie, right? The, like the, yeah. the T virus. Okay. Yeah, the T virus, right? Uh-huh. So I actually found it on uh, what was it called? Uh, Etsy. Th- Etsy, yeah. Yeah. A guy that custom makes those things, and he sells you like a set of vials for like seventy dollars, and it's like five vials. Yeah, yeah, man. But the guy shows you how he makes them. He like you can. 3D print everything, but just to put it together, it's like yeah. The fuck. thing, the thing too, though, is 3D printers are expensive, dude. Well, some I, are not no more. Like some are actually, it down. the good yeah. ones though, dude. The good ones are expensive, and the good well, ones are usually what you need. Well, not not necessarily because like it depends like how small you want things. Yeah, like, exactly, example, exactly. Uh, uh, like the two hundred dollar ones, you can print like uh, again going back to like the miniatures, little figures, like buttons or whatever you want. Uh-huh. Uh, if you want like a like an Iron Man helmet, obviously, yeah, you're gonna need to get a, a better one. But oh, yeah, even yeah. then, like like four hundred dollars for a printer is not exp- it's not a no. That's not. actually that's the standard now. Yeah, they they were expensive five years ago. They're getting cheaper now. But that's because of uh, technology advancements, man. That's because of 3D printers printing 3D printers, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> We're ahead of the game. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? What does your company do? Oh, well, we sell 3D printers. Oh, well, where do you source them? Oh, we have a 3D printer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's crazy, man. But uh, again, like you have to know how to program it, too. Yeah, so I mean, but this is a, that's the fun part about it, right? You yeah. can find someone, learn, and again, beauty of capitalism, you don't need to know everything. You can find someone, you can to find do, somebody that knows <laughs> to do it for you. And I mean, perfect example, right? Like when I was looking for, for something to make, right? If, uh, music, right? I asked, I asked you, I didn't need to know. I asked you, you did it for me. I found someone to make me a logo, and mm-hmm. and uh, obviously, I, I loved it, right? So I gave you that, uh, well, I, I paid you. With that blackened bottle, even though I know you asked Ooh, me to. You, you, you pay with that ass. But mm. man. Sh- you don't say that on, in the castle. <laughs> what do you mean? What happens you off the record it. stays off the record. And I know it. It's on the record. <laughs> <laughs> what's the tax rate on your butt beans? What's, oh. what's, <laughs> what's the tax <laughs> rate on them it? cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> Was it a chain, the T virus? You, what you're talking about? Like a necklace? No, no the, like the, the, the he vials. Actually sells the full vial. Like oh full, shit! You remember the shit that the... they would carry in the suitcase? Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, cause I seen, I'm here looking at online. Oh. And I see only a necklace, not like a badass little decoration. Yeah. With the, the the thing that a uh, fucking Etsy's a cool place to go to, right? Like anyone can start a store. I've thought about, uh, I think I even started one fucking when I was doing my paintings back in the day. 
And oh, nobody bought anything. <laughs> well, <laughs> fucking whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I and, and, your and, stuff, I bought them all. I, you know what? They went to a serious collector. <laughs> oh. uh, speaking of that, I was thinking about the. What is the what is the one that I did with the smiley face? What is that from? The, is that one the from Ghost, Ghost in the, in the Shell? Shell? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh shit. I I think that one like looking back that one's probably one of the cooler ones. It that, is. That I, I, did. I like it a lot. But that one's I, I think it, it's all about the the marketing nowadays and I think like with mm-hmm. every single year every oh, new fight cool. comes out. Yeah, like the the vials. I think I just sent you guys a link. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, pretty much all, all you have to do is type in Resident Evil vial and uh, Etsy, and you'll find the link. Not not that I'm tied to the guy or anything, right? But when you find something that is you know beautiful, you kind of like you yes. want to tell people about it. Yeah, yeah. So I actually found I found this one on on TikTok, man. And TikTok pretty much is free marketing, man. Get people out there, and if somebody likes it, they're gonna share it. Like uh, like what was it that that guy that went viral a couple of months ago? For drinking that uh, oh, the, ocean spray, the, cho- um, the cholo on the skateboard. Yeah, the cholo. On the skateboard. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got- ocean that spray, from- cranberry juice. Yeah, dude. Like the guy just did a video that lined up. You vibed with it, or mm-hmm. some people did. And I mean, I'm pretty sure that song now that that's a what 1970 song. Yeah, well, that got- song that song went number one on Billboard after that that yeah. came out. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say that. Like that song went on the billboards. And the the company now that pretty much because people started replicating mm-hmm. that whole ocean spray thing, ocean spray kind of like started like kind of like, hey, by the way, here's a truck and a, uh, a uh, lifetime supply of cranberry juice. Yeah, dude. So <laughs> yeah. that gets random, and and capitalism to some extent has its uh, benefits, and I think that's one of the benefits. Like just someone randomly can become popular, famous. The guy like took advantage of it he started his own line of shirts and everything with his uh likeness on the on the on the on the shirts right so he made the best out of it man and yeah so i mean sometimes as old people right those or boomer that those boomer feelings boomer <gasps> mentality shut up boomer <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like this is like oh back in my day but you know unfortunately like that marketing aspect of tiktok is it's actually good yeah that's just social media as a as a whole, but at the same time, like it kind of, kind of holds you back too. Cause like you, you, you make one fucking huge TikTok, and for the rest of your life, you're trying to recapture that virality, yeah. I guess. Yeah, you get sucked uh, in hardcore, and you keep trying and trying. I think uh, I think the reason why that dude kind of blew up is because. He had to like ride his skateboard like fucking ten miles or some shit to work, and he was just fucking on his longboard fucking skating, and he recorded that TikTok and he was drinking juice because what the fuck else is he gonna do riding a skateboard <laughs> to work? Imagine he would have been drinking a beer. Yeah, but like, oh man, I would have had chingles of beer. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. But you don't think so? I I think so. I don't think Maybe. so. People will probably just be more off put, like, oh, he's he's drunk and he's going to work. Uh, uh. I never seen the video. I only seen that, that little ten second they show there on the commercial. I mean, that's esen- that's essentially what all that is. That's pretty much what the whole video is. Yeah. Everything oh, else okay. is just him vibing as he's writing. Yeah. But I just like a lot of. I don't think he would have gotten beer because if you think about it, back when the Denver Broncos won the <laughs> Super Bowl, that Eli was like, I'm just going to go home and have some butt Yo, light, pay- right? You mean Peyton Manning. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, Peyton Manning. My bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, Peyton Manning was like, oh, I'm going to go home and have some butt lights. Like, he wasn't paid to do that. He just <laughs> said it because he was actually going to go do that. Shit, if you're butt light, you oh. make sure that by the time he gets home, there's like there's a, a goddamn waiting for him. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's three crates of butt lights to choose from. Like, hey, cual quieres, which was the coldest one, well, you know? That, that's uh, kind of the deal with Bud Light and uh, Post Malone. I think he's, like, sponsored by Bud Light or some bullshit. Yeah, he is, because I saw, like, there was, like, a video of him with all Bud Light shit. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, everything he does, he's got a Bud Light. Whether there's beer, yeah. in, beer in the can or not, yeah. 
Wow, that one I did not know about. Yeah, I, I remember I was watching this video of some guy gonna... He, he was releasing an album, like Bentleys and Beers or some shit like that. And uh, they were gonna build him a computer so that he could stream and game on. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, oh, is there a way to incorporate like Bud Light into it? Oh, I fucking love Bud Light. Bah. I don't, I don't, beers, really, but like, I don't get the appeal of fucking Post Malone, but whatever. I guess I'm a yeah. boomer. Yeah, you have that boomer mentality. Oh yeah, yes. but, but we're, we're all about all about a girl, right? Hey, that's that's <laughs> real Aww. talent. All yeah, right? that's a classic, man. That that has to be a classic, man. I do. The, the one thing that I can never like just let go is they got paid to do that. <laughs> Some, somebody paid him to sing that terribly <laughs> Okay, so when you do something It's about the views and the listens, right? I, I don't think they wanted uh, that kind of views I don't think they paid him to sing terribly uh, It just happened And it happened to They paid him before but that's he a, sang But that, that's the thing well, Yeah, they got paid to perform <laughs> Okay, they didn't know it was going to go that bad <laughs> But it went bad, and that's the thing. How many listens did it get? Like, if you think about like some of the disasters oh, in the it, last ten it, years, it got go so to... many views. Yeah, exactly. but, and, and it got so many views because they also blocked it. And no, it, it got no. so many dislikes. Or oh, dislikes, and they I th- took it off. But you're like, no, don't take off this piece of shit. This is internet <laughs> history right here. Yeah, yes. like it blew up like fucking months after the performance. The performance happened like in January last year. And it didn't get popular until like fucking June or some shit. Maybe even a little later. Like it took fucking four or five months of it being hidden on the internet for somebody to post it on Reddit. And <sighs> but but isn't that the purpose of posting something to get the views? I understand it did it for yeah. it happened for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. If if we look into like old school stuff, that like one of the worst. Things to get posted on the internet Friday, uh, a couple of years ago, right? That uh, that horrible Rebecca, attempt at a music career, right? Rebecca Black. Re- Rebecca Black. Well, yeah, you, right. You like, mean musically that... acclaimed, critically acclaimed Rebecca Black? Oh yeah, pretty. <laughs> I like how you stopped to laugh. If, if they get paid by the number of clicks you get or the number of listens, yeah. isn't that ultimately? Still, you got the goal the wrong way, but you still got paid for doing yeah, you, so, something that bad. So uh, that that's kind of like how I see things now. Like, uh, like so for me, like I, I like to use the comparison of like people that are professional gamers are people that are like signed to an esports team and they get paid to play video games, right? But now <laughs> there's there's streamers and YouTubers that make probably even more money doing the same thing but they're doing it on their own they're not getting paid through an organization they don't have management or whatever they're just doing their shit on their own <laughs> and they're making feria right they're making bank and they don't Dude. and they don't have to win tournaments yeah they don't they don't have to show up they don't have to like perform <laughs> Who, who thing. who's to say I, they're I, not professional gamers right to me i think streamers and youtubers that are very successful are professional at that's professional level. If you're getting paid to do something, you're a professional. Very true. Maybe like, you suck at it. I guess. Yeah. You are. Hey. Well, it, just, do, okay. So this this is the thing about that. Like, think about everybody on the bench of an NFL team. Somebody's oh. getting. Paid. Yeah. Somebody's yeah, got to be the I, Cleveland Browns. No, no, and, and I get that right. Like they're not they're not getting paid to be good. They're getting paid to be there just in case something happens. Yeah. If you compare the salary I mean, of that they have versus anybody from like they're the good X to make the ro- they're good enough to make the roster. So I mean. Yeah, yeah heard, like there is this, uh, you know, since the whole COVID happened, like they, they've been taking like uh, different routes and plans in case like of a whole if quarterbacks go down, like what happened to the Broncos last week? Denver, yeah, they yeah. they signed they, lost, they signed they their like third string wide receiver from the practice squad to be quarterback. Yeah, because he played quarterback for like one year in college. Oh uh, yeah, in high school or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but it's stupid because. There's this other team. I don't know which team I forgot. Had uh, a really known backup quarterback. Like, he's old. He's, like, in his late 30s. But he's been a backup all his life. Hoyer? Or that? <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. Hoyer. Somebody else. I can't remember his name. 
They told they told him we're gonna pay you like twenty grand a week or something just, like that. You're gonna stay at home just in case. You yeah you you stay in shape. Yeah practice yeah Practice yeah. in case the whole quarterback wipes out. I was like, what? That's, that's fucking awesome, dude. They have somebody just, on retainer. That's what that's called. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> he he's not on the team, but like, if we call you, you're gonna step up, right? Yeah. Was it like a few years back when we were down to a third string? Was it Edelman gonna eventually? No, they they, they considered him. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, he was what one for one at that time. He like, he, he had a better. <laughs> I think he had the best uh, quarterback uh, rating in the NFL at that point. <laughs> yeah, one he, for one. You're at a hundred percent. Yeah, he threw he threw one pass and a TD at the same time. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, and yeah, I think so and, like, and I think it was plus twenty five yards. It was a, like a a decent throw and. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Edelman. Uh, I have a bunch of his merch. There's a he he sells a T-shirt and it's just called the Throw, and it's a <laughs> it's a picture like of a, it's a picture of a silhouette of him throwing the fucking football. Gee, yeah, dude, like that that's just crazy, man. Like st- st- stuff like that, but random thing. I just pulled the Rebecca Black thing. That thing has ten thousand, ten million listens <laughs> on Spotify. Look up uh... so. What the fuck is that guy's name? The that Gangnam Style asshole. He only had that oh, one song, and I think it has like a hundred million views or some shit. I think it even it may even have more than that. Fuck, I don't even know. It, it definitely has more, but that's the thing. Like, but Gangnam Style was a, a hit, right? It was a, a song was, that everybody liked. So was, so was Black Friday or Black Friday Friday. <laughs> No, no, no! Friday was so horrible. Like that girl had to had to get homeschooled because of how bad that song was. Oh, yeah, she, I mean, you know, that's it, just because of internet trolls. Like, yeah, yeah, no, she I'm did. I'm serious. She did. She actually had to get homeschooled um, because uh, she got bullied into it. Actually, what was it? Tosh uh, was the one that brought it up. He actually, oh, she actually God. came back a few years later to be like, "Hey, by the way, like this is what my career has become." Just to be like, "Hey, we got you bullied out of school. Let's Jesus. see what happened to you." <laughs> okay, so check it out. I just looked up Psy Gangnam Style on YouTube. Official music video. The first person that's here, it's Dance Gangnam Style. That's the person that posted this, and it has 121 million views. The official Psy YouTube channel has 3.8 billion views. Another channel, another channel posted the same video. It has 2.6 million. Another channel, 11 million. Like... What the fuck, dude? Spotify has a quarter of a billion. Jesus Christ. Plays. And that's that. And that's after fucking... And you still get paid for it, right? It could be get the, the contract, yes. right? Yeah, Some true. royalties, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that's like... if he did the contract, right? <laughs> yeah, that's if he fucking didn't get fucked. If he didn't get, uh, what's it called? Uh, his name? Uh, Chappelle. Yeah. Dave Chappelle. Dude, he had a couple of albums after that. Can Gamma Styles from 2013. Oh, yeah, he's fucking. One, he, I'm sure he's had a bunch two. of fucking albums and songs that he put out, but nobody fucking listened to that shit. Dude, he had three albums after. <laughs> yeah, but he's a fucking. He's a, he's a god. Where is he from? Like fucking South Korea or some shit? Yeah. I'm sure he's like a fucking living idol over there. That shit went worldwide, dude. That shit was a fucking trend, and then it became a meme. In ten years, that song is gonna be cool again. Like, think about it. <laughs> That's just how. Ran- when was it came out? What? What year? Two thousand thirteen. Two thousand thirteen. So almost Se- seven years. Seven ago. years. Dude, he's uh, randomly. I was listening to his music just right now. It doesn't sound that bad. <laughs> His yeah. second most viewed song is still 57 million hits. Yeah, because all the people were curious. Yeah, that, that's had just, it. It's just riding the, the wave of that first one. Yeah. So, I mean, think about how much money he made from YouTube. Yeah, see, well, that he needs to have a, a YouTube channel to be He, he does. He has an official sigh. Oh, nice. Official and, sigh. and that one is the one that has 3.8 billion views. Oh, man. But there's people that reposted it and they have millions of views. Yeah, so they get money off him. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's what that's another thing. There's a lot of people that fucking do that and they get famous off of other people's work. 
I mean, there's a there's a bunch of there's a whole industry behind reaction videos. Yeah. Well, so reaction for, videos yeah. are different, right? But I mean, but you still are getting off of somebody else's, right? You yeah. do like, like for example, there was some, uh, and I know this is like a huge thing on the YouTube community. There's a a YouTube. Uh, channel that was getting taken down or was potentially going to get taken down because they were posting like full videos uh-huh. of an episode but they were reacting to the full episode yeah. so to some extent you could watch the <clears throat> episode while someone else is reacting uh, and going around the paywall to watch the episode right? Yeah, so, so, so there, there's this technical jargon so it's called like fair use right Yeah. so if uh, if you're going to use something that's a uh, uh, obviously copywritten or fucking uh, has the rights reserved for whatever. The only way that you can post stuff like that's the way reaction videos got their shit is if it's transformative or you add something to it. Like you can't literally just put Seinfeld on your fucking channel. And, I mean, you're not supposed to, right? People still do it, but you can't monetize it. So fucking uh, like that's how reaction videos kind of became a thing, right? So, like, you have to make sure that the video is a certain size in the screen. Uh, like, you have to make sure that your voice is louder than the audio of the fucking video. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're going to, like, play music, like, you have to stop the music. You can't play it completely through. And now people are, are getting hit with DMCAs. So, I mean, that's, like, record companies coming after them for using the music. It hit to a Twitch. I think we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, and they mute your... Well, the thing about it is, like, yeah. for example, me, when I used to do Twitch and record, they would mute that section. Yeah, they make you mute it or cut it out. Or they cut it out, or actually. Like, it. Yeah, they'll do it for you. They actually yeah. will mute that whole section, which, obviously, I didn't care about because I was just doing it for fun. And... I was doing it more for the live experience because I would have people on the chat that we would just be like Ando Palo, right? So yeah, like yeah, one yeah. of my one of my camaradas kind of like felt a little down, so we just started talking smack on on stream, and then, and I completely forgot to turn off the music. Yeah. Uh, so we were messing around. I was cosplaying like in the middle of the damn thing, right? So, um, it just happened, right? And I didn't realize it until I came back and I started trying to rewatch see what stupid thing I did. Yeah. And. It was muted for actually a lot of parts because the stream <laughs> was about eight hours long. So, damn. I was like, damn. Yeah, I, I, I was. I had my water breaker next to me at that point. Point. <laughs> had my drink, so I was ready to go for a couple of hours. How many man, tokens so. did you get, Cam Girl? Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I, I probably didn't, man. I, I have no idea. Even if they did, I probably have no <laughs> idea. I haven't checked my my Twitch account in months. Yeah, uh, fucking, I, I created a Twitch account for this just so that, like, we could do a live podcast, but fucking, we're never going to do that. Why not? It's too risky, dog. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, with, with with the way and the shit talk that we do, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's there's no turning off the internet. Uh, but, yeah, like, uh, now, fucking uh, people that are, that used to use music that was copywritten, like, uh, the record companies are, like, going through their catalog of back history, and they're like, hey, uh, fucking, you played this song fucking five years ago, and it's in your archive, like, fucking delete it, or we're gonna sue your ass. And, uh, that's the reason why I took the fucking little knowledge that I have musically and used it to create every music that I use on the show, unless I'm, like, shit-talking actual music or... Like this, but Wait. isn't that more of a parody? Doesn't it go around that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> that like that's still like their rendition, right? So they have the the rights to that. They, well, I mean, since since that's only like three seconds, I, there, there's no way any algorithm is gonna be like, oh, that's from this song from fucking. This performance or whatever the fuck. Like, algorithms are crazy smart now. They're also crazy <laughs> stupid. Like, they'll yeah. give you, like... No, because they are. Like, they'll, yeah, they are. You have, you, have, you have so many content creators fighting demonetization and, and a couple of other items out there. Because it's like, how the hell is this? And it's like the guy talking about, like, corn. Yeah. And, like, inappropriate. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. 
it so, looks like like days before like they can reverse it, but by that time you're like you lost oh, all that money. No longer, yeah. yeah, you lost all that money. It's no longer relevant. People are not gonna watch it. So it's 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 crazy. I think it's crazy for me how it all began, right? Like if you know old school, right? Again, going back to the boomer days, it began with Napster. Yeah, and look how far it has extended into. Yeah, uh, at Napster and like all those illegal pirating things were super ahead of their time and he, I literally like they shaped the way we consume music now Yep. and uh, I guess with that in mind we haven't done your mom and it's uh, I think it's time that we get into your mom alright go ahead Okay, so that's good, right? I don't know. The last beer of the night that I just finished this piece of shit, delicious IPA in my ass. Taste fucking, oh, garbage. I'm never buying that shit again. And I swear my name is garbage, but that is a disgrace to my fucking name. I get to end the night with a fucking sour monkey. Oh, that oh, smells like heaven. <laughs> Guess no more. No more stone beer for you, garbage. No, I'm never fucking even looking at that brand anymore, man. I, I swear to God, if I see it, it's like taboo now. It's if I see it, I immediately am gonna walk past it and all the beers I, I, around it. You know, this this is our story of. I'm not sure if we had ever told it before on the fucking podcast, but Milwaukee's best. That's my Milwaukee's best. This is the kind of fucking beer that you get like. Three dollars and you get like a fucking twenty-four pack. That's the kind of bullshit beer that I feel that that is. I'm if somebody out there likes it, I'm so sorry, but that is like shit to me right now. Now, sour monkey though, right now. Have we ever told you that story, Dizzy? The what? The Milwaukee, the Milwaukee West story. No. <laughs> so we were in a get together, and it was me, the clones, and Banano. They sent us to go get more beer and whatnot. So we go. So we go to our Walmart. So we buy the Buds. You know, the Bud Lies, the Bud Wise, or whatever you want it. We check out. So we had we, we found out we had money left over. So the clones go tell Banana, hey, go we'll get more beer. Banana, go get some more beer. You know, we're waiting for him. They're at, literally in front of the checkout. Comes back. I don't pay attention, but one of the clones goes, what the fuck is this guy buying? What is this shit is he buying? And I'm looking at it. Fuck, man. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not much of a beer drinker. I'm like, what the fuck is that beer? He pays up. He comes. I think it's like a 24-pack. And I think we had like $10 left. So like, what beer is this? But not only like Milwaukee's West, man, or Best, or whatever. Yeah, Milwaukee's Best. And I go, why'd you get that? Why not another Bud Light, Bud Weiss, or whatever? You know what the ones we already had. But no, man, this, you know we get more money out of this. I mean, we get more out of what we had. We're like, all right, and you know, but I'm not the one drinking the beer that night. I had my whiskey. The people drinking beer, well, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> so we go back. They finish all the Bud Lights, all the Budweiser, whatever. What's left? The Milwaukee West. And holy shit, everybody had trouble drinking that fucking beer because it tasted like shit. This <laughs> to the point people were closing their fucking nose and drinking the beer. <laughs> like pinching their nose like they're taking medicine when they're fucking five or what yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> he said quantity over quality, quality yeah <laughs> well yeah i guess that makes sense whole bunch of thir- thirsty men you're gonna get as much as you can right you yeah, know and that's the thing like i'm not sure if he had tried it before he was just experimenting that time for the <laughs> first time because he's actually the guy that recommended to me a uh, rolling rock Super cheap ass beer, right? Like seven dollars, you get a twelve pack of bottles, right? The beer's not bad; it's fresh, yeah. and I think that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, it's a pale, 
pale beer, right? So obviously you don't expect to have that strong taste. But dude, I would take Rolling Rock over this shit. Like I really think that those ten dollars went to fucking waste. You just and burned them. <laughs> I, I burned them. Like I, I mean, not burned them because at least I fucking got drunk out of it, right? Seven point seven alcohol level. But yeah. dude, like at this point, like if for any reason in the future you're the guy that recommended this shit to me, like fuck you and everybody <laughs> in your future fucking family tree dude like seriously like <laughs> i hope you lose ten dollars when you're trying to buy food or something i don't know man I hope you step on a lego <laughs> and on shit at the same time oh, have you yeah, ever stepped just... on shit barefoot like dog shit yeah like dog shit or anything yeah uh, i've done it with a chant club and never barefoot <sighs> Chunk, fucking wild. I've done barefoot. It's not. I mean, you still. I mean, I, my foot went from straight from the carpet straight into like the shower. Kind of like I hopped on one foot all the way to the shower, like oh. clean it. But that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've ever stepped on fucking dog shit barefoot, but it always sucks when you step on some kind of fucking animal shit. <laughs> or any unknown substance. <laughs> yeah, fucking. Uh, I guess one time uh, when I was little, uh, we were uh, fucking driving uh, from Corpus to here, and uh, we I had the window down in the car, and uh, fucking I had my arm out on the fucking on the windowsill and shit, and fucking just a big old white <laughs> landed on my arm, fucking bird shit on me have you ever had a bird shit on you yes I have That's... my car has <laughs> no I have I have happened a couple of times <laughs> they say it's supposed to be lucky or some bullshit but yeah. I didn't feel very lucky fucking having to wipe some animal shit off my arm how did the rest of your day go I don't remember but <laughs> I'm pretty sure it went really shitty I remember one of the, one of the times it happened to me. I had a a Charles Barkley T-shirt hey. where he won the MVP, and like the bird shit landed on his face. I was like what the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. Like because I was a big Barkley fan. I was like, why did they shit on Barkley's face? Right on my fucking idol. Yeah, <laughs> that's badass. <sighs> All right. Oh, uh... Random sports note. Uh, Blunt retired. Legarrett Blunt? Yeah. Well, who the fuck was he playing for? I have no clue, man. But, I mean, he got us a couple of touchdowns back in the day, man. So. Yeah, well, I mean, he was a big key factor in winning a Super Bowl for the Patriots. Holy shit, yeah. I didn't even know. I'm looking through, like, sports news and. Yeah, I didn't know he retired you... either. But the last, the last I knew he was playing for Detroit, and that was, like, two years ago. Yeah, he was playing for uh, what's his name? Um, oh, he got fired, you know, that, right? Uh, Patricia? Patricia. Yeah. 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 Damn. Do think the Patriots will sign him again? I don't know. Uh, uh, a lot of the like speculation when the Lions fired him was uh, like, oh, they're like, oh, well, look at uh, Josh McDaniels. He coached Denver for two years, and they fired him, and he came right back, and they like brought him in. And, uh, like, I was thinking about it, I was like, yeah, that's that's cool. I mean, he, w- with Patricia, we had probably the best defense we've had in a long fucking time. And uh, um, I, I don't know about that, man. Last year, when we had no defense coordinator, I mean, we had the best defense in, we've had in a long time. Well, that's because we had the players. <laughs> uh, and we had Belichick pretty much overseeing that. Yeah, well, fucking... Uh, or whatever, fucking, they were like, oh, yeah, well, like, McDaniels came back. Like, he'll probably just come right back. And and then I thought about it, and I was like, well, I mean, they kind of have to rebuild the whole fucking team. So I, I think it makes more sense that he does come back because, like, he knows the system. He knows the schemes. He mm-hmm. knows what's, like, expected of the defense. And, I mean, motherfucker's a rocket scientist, dude. The, the thing about this year, man, it's like... um. I'm not too much into NBA, but I know, what was it, Shaq? There was a year where 
I'm not sure if it's Shaq, but so if I'm speaking, I'm so sorry. But there was a year when the lockout or the strike happened with the NBA that the Spurs won uh, a championship, right? Oh, they didn't sh- get to play the yeah, yeah, they didn't get to play the full the, the full season, season right? Yeah, yeah, the short season, right? That there's an asterisk asterisk next to that ring, right? It's like that was a short season, so they don't really like to count it. Yeah. Like, do you think we like with COVID, this season's even gonna count? Well, yeah, uh, I don't see why not. I mean, you yeah. have a lot of you have a lot of teams that get like, for example, Denver, right? Um, or a couple of other teams that have gotten, you know, s- struck with COVID, right? That they get to sit out half of the defense, half of the offense, and like, would you even consider this like an actual win? Whoever wins the Super Bowl this year, whether it's you know whatever team's hot right now, like how how much are you keeping attention to the NFL right now? Honestly, like I have a fantasy football league, and well, not I don't, but I'm part of one, and we're like I'm eight and three or eight and whatever, dude. I have no fucking idea how I am like that. I'm, I haven't even watched a single fucking game since season one, since uh, week one. Like, honestly, uh, I think football right now is like who gives a shit. Well, it's... No, it's a lot of people give a shit, and uh, I don't think yeah, the COVID has affected a lot, but yeah. It's still a whole season, dude, where the other ones were half a season or less. Like, look at the NBA. It was not even a whole season at all. Not even a, I don't think it was even half. Yeah, like, uh, the the most recent one, the NHL. They had uh, they had started the season. I think they were, like, almost uh, halfway through the season, and they started locking everything down. They stopped it. And what they did was, like, uh, with whatever rankings they had already done, that's how they... Uh, Managed to make brackets for the playoffs. But you see, that's the thing. It doesn't that take away if you have to work with what you have? Like for example, I know, and all, the only reason I know this honestly is because of the the fantasy thing. Uh, Kelvin Ridley, I think it's Ridley. Let me double check. I'm actually pulling up my my fantasy app right now. Kelvin Ridley, yeah. the receiver. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds. The receiver is right. actually on COVID. It's on COVID leave, right? He's one of the top receivers of the fucking league, dude, and. This guy is on, yeah, it was Kevin really, and he was gone for season, uh, for, sorry, for week, uh, what, the, what fucking week are we even on? Well, week 13, right? Yeah. So I think he sat down week 12 and 11, um, because they were afraid that he had the COVID, right? So you're playing against teams that maybe for even if it, even if it's just one week, man, like if you're missing your your player because there's something suspected, like. How many other teams didn't go through that 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 I wasn't keeping track of, right? Uh, I, the only reason, again, I know because of Ridley is because of my my fantasy app, but I haven't watched the game since since week, what, two, one? Like you, for example, Puppy, you're a Niners fan. Can you tell me that you've seen every single week's game? Yes, I have. You have? Yeah. How, can have any of your team... Um, have been affected by it. Well, I mean, I, th- I think well, the Niners are the exception. Le- le- yeah, the you Niners guys have a bunch of injuries. Injuries and COVID. <laughs> like, there was at one time we had no receivers. Like, all three starting receivers were not even playing. We were in the <laughs> third string, fourth string, and fifth string receivers. <laughs> but no, yeah, like, uh, I still see it as a full season. I won't take nothing away. Yeah, it sucks that one or two players, your key players are gone on, for yeah. a week. Mm-hmm. But you get you have to see it like it's an injury. Yeah, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like but, I know you, you don't see it as an injury; it's a, it's a COVID. But mm-hmm. but that's how you have to see it. Like they were they weren't doing taking care of themselves, so they won't get it. Like it's almost like an injury. I I don't know, man. But because and and the only reason why I say this is because it's like again, it's a. Uh, you have the uh, asymptomatic people and the. Uh... You know what? I guess we'll see it when it hits the playoffs. Yeah. If one of these star players, especially like a quarterback, mm-hmm. can't play in the playoff, oh, then e that's gonna hurt. I mean, like. Yeah. Also, you know what? Actually, yeah, that, that's actually a great point. I so for example, your your team makes the playoffs, right? And all of a sudden, like, some of what what's remaining of healthy roster. It still gets like COVID, like it's it's gonna make a huge difference, and and I think it's gonna feel like like that, right? Like Shaq has this, uh, and again, if I'm speaking, I'm so sorry. Shaq has this thing where like the he doesn't count the whatever lockout season when I was out there, 
um, because it wasn't a full season, right? Like even even this past year, right? That we had the the shortened. But, but that's the thing. Like a full season is different from a half a season is different from what the NFL having. And if I had the full season where you can still make up the games, they have pushed games further back to even yeah. to help you help them come yeah. back to players. So, you know, obviously it, it can't be all the time. But they're doing their best. That's mm-hmm. why I, st- I still count whoever wins this year unless I, until we see it in the playoffs. If it hurts in the playoffs big time, I'll be like, damn, that sucks. Like, so the, that's the thing is, I know, like, for example, we, this is something that we always brought up with Clon, right? The the football season, you miss one game, and it's a hell of a fucking deal, right? Yeah. So, again, for example, Kelvin, I think, believe, and again, I believe that he missed two weeks. Dude, two weeks? Is the difference between yeah, but you, you know make what? the playoffs? But, yeah, but you know what? The Falcons really sucked, so I don't think. <laughs> no, no, and, and I get that. Again, the, the Falcons. I'm, I'm only using this example because that's the only one that I know about top of my head, right? But if we start looking into like some of the other teams or shady ass divisions, like the fucking Cowboys division, right, where you have everybody that's like zero and fucking thirteen, and they're still potentially like making the playoffs, right? I have no problem if one of the teams in the NFC East go to the playoffs with a fucking losing record, then another team with a winning record will not go. I, I, that's more of a problem now, right now, we're facing mm-hmm. than the fucking COVID thing. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, the, the the top three teams in the NFC East are three and three. <laughs> or three and what is it? Three and eight or? Whatever the yeah. fuck they are. We're in week thirteen, so they should be three and three and three and what the fuck? Three and, and nine? Yes. Three and nine? Ten. Three and ten. Dude, that's fucking horrible. The the <laughs> fact that a fucking three and thirteen team can go to the playoffs is a fucking joke. What do you it mean? I, I wild, have card. Pro- wild card. Wild <laughs> card. I have more a problem with that. That imagine they're gonna go with a five and Whatever record, a team, a team with a nine and what four or five, whatever record is not gonna go. Yeah, you I, I, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, that sh- that should not fucking be allowed. But they're never gonna change that because you know fucking Jerry Jones is like one of the you know the big dicks on the fucking. Well, the Cowboys are uh, last place. So yeah, I, and I get that, but you know, you, you're not gonna change the team just because it. I mean, you're not gonna change the the structure mid season, right? Because uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. Know, if, I think if everybody agrees to it, I think they should do an exception this year. Like you know, whoever wins the East, if you have a losing record, you're not gonna go. You you're not gonna yeah, go. You, you can't. You can't go. You can't. Fuck you. We'll you're just get. Home. We'll just get another team from a different division with a better record. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Like or I, I like I know. For, uh, fucking like even though like I, again like I know. I'm um, sorry. Uh, Desi and I are <laughs> are uh, Patriots fans. Like, dude, we at the beginning of the season we knew like, dude, the Bills were gonna take it. Like we're fucking garbage. We're we're hot garbage. Uh, this at, year. At first, it didn't seem like it seemed like you guys had a chance. Of, no, I, I I I didn't think it didn't because if anything that we have seen in sports is like all we're waiting is for film. So that we can figure out this whoever it is that's trying to throw the ball, right? Uh, so the moment that the season began and the games were too close, they're like they're gonna figure this guy out way too fast. And at the beginning of the season, again, again, I'm I'm all about better check, you trust the team, and I'm still a Patriots fan. I don't care if I have a losing season. Um because I knew the Bills, the way they looked last year, it's like this is our last chance for us to get a Super Bowl. Before we become hot garbage for the next decade or so, you yeah, know? For, for the next twenty years. I thought the Dolphins would have a better record than the Pats, so. <laughs> yeah, dude, and, and and you know the thing is, at this point, if you were a realistic fan, you were not just riding the Tom Brady dick all fucking ten years, whatever. Uh, you knew 20. this was gonna happen. Oh, twenty years. I'm so sorry. On nineteen. This was whatever. Gonna, whatever the fuck, right? Uh, this was going to happen. Like, we were going to fucking get to the point where we're like, we're going to need to rebuild. We're going to need three, four, five years to potentially get it right. Hopefully, Belichick stays with us all this time and God gives him the years that he needs for him 
to prove himself, right? That it wasn't Brady carrying him, that it was him creating the system. It was both of them. That's it, dude. And at this I, point, Bill, I think, is a little bit... I think one of his faults right now is he's not drafting good players. It's really hurting them. He hasn't drafted anybody really that good for the past couple of years. But that's because they blocked him on two years before, right? Like whenever he was trying to get to keep Jimmy and get rid of uh, Brady, right? They're like, no, fuck this. Let me go ahead and Kraft was like, I, I still want to blow Brady, right? So um, they did that, right? I mean, yes, he got us a Super Bowl that year. Awesome, right? But <laughs> He was still at his prime for him to be like, get the fuck out of here and let me keep somebody that's going to be my next five or six years. But no, it's not even that quarterback. But I'm like, I'm talking about all around. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. They have no receivers, no running backs. I'm like, he hasn't drafted that well at all for the past years. Yeah, he's it's been, been, it's been hurting defense. him. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, some of, his, some of his picks have been flops. Like, what was the wide receiver in Keel? And Nikhil and Harry, Kiel, yeah. And Kill Harry, unfortunately, wasn't the uh, yeah he's the, he's the thing that we wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he like he was a good prospect, but he's proving that he can't really fucking handle the NFL, I guess. Yeah, and on top of that, like he was fucking injured for yeah. like how many weeks? He's he's still in and out with injury. They haven't really given him a hundred percent play. Yeah, so I mean, but that's but I still like kind of going back to the whole. I just think that there's going to be an asterisk next to this season. Like, not because uh, unless, I'm going to... Uh, like I said, unless shit happens in the playoffs, maybe. I just think that you already are hurting because how much a single game matters in the NFL, right? Like, for example, the one thing that I've always hated, and I think, again, going back to what Clone would say, right, is that in the NBA and in the MLB, you can take a month off and still make the playoffs. And I think it happened... Uh, I had never paid attention to, to the NBA until, like, I, I would listen to, going back to what we had talked about, Undisputed, right? And Undisputed, like, there was a there was a time when uh, Sharon, Shannon said, like, oh, LeBron is taking November off or October off. Like, can you imagine taking a month off in, in the NFL and still making the playoffs? It's the likelihood of that happening is extremely low. And it happened with the, uh, uh, LeBron back in 2016, 17, where he pretty much was injured for all of 2018, uh, like uh, October or something like that. And not injured, but he even took like a couple of games where he's like, ah, I'm not going to play, whatever the case. And he still made the playoffs because you can afford that in, in the NBA. Here in the NFL, two, three games is the difference between the playoffs and... I'll see you again next year. Like, I'm going to not get to play in January. I'm not going to play until October or August, whatever. Yeah, well, the, yeah. Dif the difference, though, is the NBA, they play way more games. Which is why I'm saying, like, here, one game with COVID, two weeks with COVID, it's but a yeah, lot more meaningful. Yeah, yeah, it is, but still, it gives a longer, a more chance to get hurt, too, in the NBA. Yeah. We had no preseason, That's man. A lot of a lot of the injuries, like you see, a lot a lot of the players that, for example, decide to sit out the uh, preseason because they're trying to get a fucking contract or whatever, whatever reason, whatever valid reason. I don't. But I don't. Mean. I don't think like they had to play the games. There's more than getting into shape that hurts them than more than playing the game. I but, think that's what, that's what happened, and all of them were not getting ready and it hurt them yeah yeah because because they didn't have that practice yeah that's why practice is different like i don't think you need to have the pre-games yes it helps the preseason games or so whatever like it does uh, help them, especially uh, the rookies but yeah like, i i disagree only on that one only because again it's different perspective i think the preseason games is i think real. The no the preseason games helps more the rookies than the veterans as long as the veterans get to work out and practice, helps them. But actually playing the game, I don't think so. I think and, it gets... and just uh, and then the whole pre they're saying that's why we need preseason. It's not because we need it. We need yeah, they do need preseason, but not them to play the games more than to be together and working out and practice. Yeah. 
I think that that's, it's more to the arm, man, because I think that the preseason games is what gets, even if it's just one quarter or five minutes, because they, they gradually get there, right? They first do first four, four full snaps. No, because, do... because if you're a veteran, you, the preseasons really are, 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 they're no good for you because you have a chance to get hurt there. It's it's more for the rookies and whatnot who I wants th- to make it for the team. I think that's what the preseason are more meant for for them than for the veterans. As long as the mm-hmm. veterans get to practice with everybody, the quarterbacks or the receivers, especially to bring somebody new and the rookies, as long as they're practicing and staying in shape, shape that's what helps them, mm-hmm. not them actually playing the game. And I, and I disagree with you on that because only because I think that the real practice of the field is never going to compare to what you're practicing with your practice squad. Yeah. Because four snaps uh, versus an actual team versus four snaps versus your but yeah, practice again, squad, they, which is they, holding back. They, they don't even play the whole game, the veterans. Well, no, which is why I'm saying a quarter, four snaps, eight snaps is still better than no snaps against your practice squad because... Uh, I'd rather... I mean, like, as long as they're practicing, I think that helps them more than... I think I would take a chance than just practicing than them getting hurt in a fucking no. meaningless preseason game. Uh, no, it, because it's happen- I, I, it happens I a lot. Like, I don't think a single snap like on the Garoppolo real game a is worth ago? more. Yeah. yeah. I don't think a single snap in the real game, even if it's a pra- even if it's a preseason game, is worth more than a practice no, it's not awful because you're actually going against people that are not going to hold back. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah. So but... a, a, a snap where people are not holding back versus a snap where people are holding back is always going to be a hundred percent of the time better. Nah, uh, I'd rather wait for them to do it in, in, in the regular season than that in the fucking preseason where a rookie or an undrafted rookie fucking ends up hurting my starting quarterback. Fuck that. Yeah, but that's that snap is more realistic than a practice snap, which is why yeah, I'm saying but, a but snap the, on the but, preseason is always worth more but that's than what I'm saying. 100 uh, snaps a hundred snaps somebody that's not going to do anything. A veteran player doesn't need the preseason game. They don't. They need to practice more than the preseason game. Oh, the rookies, hell no. They are, no, yeah. Hell the rookies, no. Hell no. Yes, they no. do. A practice you'll, snap you'll is never, dude. A practice snap is gonna it. be the same as a real season snap. Because you know why? Because the preseason, even if you do play the preseason game, it doesn't even match the actual NFL regular season game. But it's way more than an actual pre on an actual practice snap. I'd rather take the non preseason game than. Oh, so you're you're. So this is what I'm asking. You're telling me that a practice snap is. Somehow more beneficial than a preseason snap. If the trend, it doesn't matter. Oh, dude! Now you're it's, just being unrealistic. No, no. Oh. if you're a veteran, you don't need it as much. Yeah, it's, yeah. The preseason is more for the rookies, the undrafted players, and whatnot because they want to make the roster. That's why you see the veterans play one quarter, and it only no. takes it only takes one quarter, one play for that veteran no. player to get hurt. Yes, no. it does, and, and, well, it, and it does, which is why you need those preseason snaps. Because perfect example, perfect example, Des Bryant, right? He jumped right into the practice, and he got hurt because he wasn't taking real snaps. No, or because so, he wasn't training in the off season. Exactly, dude, that, that guy was training all off season. Dude. The guy will be posting all the time that oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing all of that. But that's the thing. I th- I think I I think I think a preseason snap is more realistic than a practice snap because obviously you're not gonna go a hundred percent on a fucking practice snap versus an actual preseason snap. You're gonna tell me that there's more effort on an actual practice no, snap no, than a preseason telling, snap? I'm not telling you there's more effort, but you're a veteran player. You don't need that preseason game because you already know you're a yeah. veteran player. The preseason games are more meant for the rookies and the undrafted players. Okay. And, and who are you playing against with on the preseason snaps, Way? The bench? The, yeah. The, the, the rookies also and, do, right? Yeah, that's and the whole gonna point. Go, and they're all going to go hardcore because they all want a spot on the roster. Correct. So then that means that your preseason snap is actually going to go ahead and be worth more than a practice snap because on the preseason snap, there's people trying to prove something. 
I wouldn't want to start my quarterbacks, my receivers on these preseason games. Yeah. Not my starters. Not nope. They don't need it. But people, need it. but people still do because they still need to get that practice to like. Hey, by the way, this is we need they to get to, you. We need to get you. To. They tell they need, them to. They need not, to get them used to those preseason. Also, dude, like you're gonna go from zero to a hundred and not expect them to. For their bodies to give out, that like even some of the pro professional players have said that the preseason oh. games were needed. Don't Again, don't. professional players have said this. Yeah, and most of the professionals say we don't need the preseason. No, the veterans, pro- actually, professional players say that we do need the preseason because they need to get into actual shape. Majority of them say they rather not do it. No, fuck that, no, that, dude. That, professional players say that they do need for, it. for them no. to get into shape. That's what OTAs are for. Yeah, and spring the, ma- the spring the, shit the, too. The, they on mandatory ones. Yeah, that's, that's what hurt them now this year more because none of them actually were actually training or whatever. Or they, if they were, they weren't doing it as hard they used to, or they they're used to do it when the camps are open and whatnot. But the preseason for veterans, it doesn't help them. Yeah, they, they, they just, should they, know the game by that by now. If anything, I think preseason for veterans is more about timing and chemistry than it is about playing the game. And I and I completely think that yes, you know the mental games, but you can know the mental game all you want if your body cannot handle it, which is why I think preseason is needed so that your body can start taking those small steps into getting from zero to twenty five to fifty to seventy five to one hundred versus going from hey I haven't played in nine months to fucking 100 dude like no fucking body can go from zero to 100 in one day or in one game which is why i think that those games are definitely understood and several of the pros have also said like those preseasons get them from zero to 25 to 50 to 75 to 100 because it get, it lets them understand like hey okay this is what the real field is because there's never going to be a single practice that is even going to go ahead and even come close to a single preseason game because you're dealing with a squad that is, you know, still taking it light versus a squad that is going to be like has something to prove. But the practice more is you to get the rhythm garbage is not. It's that's what they call it practice. Like because most veterans and whatnot and even the preseason is not going to show you how real the NFL is until the regular season starts because but, most, most but it's going to start... show you more than the practice, and that's what I'm trying to get. That I'm not saying that it's going to be a hundred percent of what the season is going to be, but a practice is never going to compare to a preseason game, and that's what my point is: that the preseason game is going to show you more than what a goddamn practice is. Oh yeah, for sure. But and that's what I'm trying to argue. Not, not even because most of the people who play in the preseason don't even make it on the roster. Yeah, that, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they have a they have something to prove, so you have people that are actually going to hundred percent. Yeah, you could you could hundred percent, but if you're no good, yeah. you're as good. As, or what, what was the if, point? If you go hundred percent and get hurt, I mean, what the fuck? Uh, but fucking... that's the thing: you still have people going hundred percent, and like you said, even some of the actual people that are still that have already have a spot on the team still go almost hundred percent on those teams because they still have to. You know, fight for their spot, right? You still have to go and try to keep that spot. So you still have, even if it's for some snap, some people going 100%, which is still going to be more than people on their practice squad, which you know they're not going 100%. Which is why I'm saying a preseason game is still always going to be a lot more realistic than a pre than an actual practice game, and that's what my point is. Well, yeah, but like aside from the preseason games, they also do scrimmages and like joint practices and shit and they also yeah. <laughs> they also get and reps up, like that too yeah and they end up kicking each other's ass like it happened with the jaguars and the pats you know what three seasons ago or two seasons ago <laughs> yeah like well i guess uh speaking of the pats do you think cam newton would have benefited from having preseason games i think he would have because he would have gotten at least a couple of snaps, you know, getting to work with Edelman on real life environment. The thing is that as much as we want to say, you know, practice is good, dude, no, I don't give a shit what kind of controlled environment you give them. It's never going to come close to a single one real life experience. 
You know what? You know, sometimes these people who play preseason, like, well, they all play preseason. You know, some of the teams have great records in the preseason. Guess what? They have crappy records in the regular season. That of shows course. You how, Perfect how much... example. Boy, the, Cleveland, always... the Cleveland Browns, right? 3 0 undefeated champions from the preseason. They get people tattoos on it and they go fucking 0 13 on the real season. Well, that, that shows you how much the preseason doesn't even matter sometimes. You're yeah. talking about, yeah, yeah, they could barely even go three. Well, maybe this year they actually have a reading worker, but for the past yeah. 30 years, they haven't. <clears throat> but that's one team versus, again, it's still a snap. That's a lot of, of teams. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I, to me, I don't think they need the preseason. I mean, cause they're going to do it, let the rookies, undrafted, premier players only play, not your stars. Not your starters or your line, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I, I get both of your arguments, and I agree with both of them. So, like, no one's wrong here, but uh, fuck it. Well, I, I don't know. Like, honestly, they, I think they don't benefit as much as it's worth from a preseason game. Worth, like, the risk. But I think they do need, like, some more hands-on than just regular practice like you, you see where I, like I'm, I'm in between both of you the, the, yeah and, and I get you because from a theory perspective you think that a practice is worth more but if anything has shown me from my work experience and whatever companies because, that I've been working because... for it's it's I've never have I ever seen any practice come close to real life environment no okay but this is the thing Right here, garbage. Like, right, there's been like since the whole COVID has happened and and whatnot, people have complained that it wasn't fair to certain teams because they couldn't practice because of the COVID. They couldn't go into the field and practice. Mm-hmm. That hurt them to to prepare for the game. That's how much practice is important. And I think I'll take practice over a preseason game. And I don't think a preseason, and, and this is where I think yeah. this is where, where we are going to differ, and this is where it's going to come to a lot of opinion versus facts, right? Because we're not going to have data. And I think that no amount of practice has ever shown me that real life experience is going to show you more, uh, less than that. Because, and, and again, this is only from work experience, right? The last 10 years that I've worked for whatever that I've done, no amount of practice is going to show you what the real life experience is ever going to show whether that real life experience is not 100% it's still better than a controlled environment period but the the thing was preseason most of the people that play in the preseason game don't even play the game I mean then they're all hoping for a, a spot that's that's why I say. Like, but but you said it yourself, right? They're competing for a spot. So yeah, that that even if it's because, even if it's three snaps what, they get. What happens to those people who actually get a spot? They don't play. <laughs> and, the people, majority, majority and the people and the people that played in there ended up trying hundred percent, which is still gonna be a lot more than what you're gonna get. No, in no because you, you, the the difference between that guy who's right in the bench and that starter. It's a huge. It's like a thirty million dollar difference, <laughs> and there's yeah. a reason. But the thing is that usually those players, for example, that that thirty million dollar difference, they go at it the first couple of snaps. So you do have starters. Oh, no, no. Are the starters oh, at the first four? The That's starters. The, the, so you're gonna you're gonna tell me that a fucking bench player is gonna be better than a starter player, even if it's just for four snaps? A bench player is going to be better than a starter? No, that's what I'm saying. There's no point of the preseason. The preseason is still, they still get a couple of snaps, or you're still going to get your first. Guess what? You're, you're, you're still, still going to get your starter players on the first couple of snaps. So, like the first four to eight snaps, you're going to go ahead and have 100% versus 100%, dude. The star is not going to try hard. They're not going to try hard. They're not. They they know they're gonna play fucking one quarter and they're gonna they're they'll they'll play right, but they're not gonna go hundred <laughs> percent. 
They're, you're not. You're, you're telling me not if they're fighting for the position, dude. You have, uh, for example, some teams that have like the first round mean, picks. Then you know the next coming of whoever the fuck is that next on the line. They're not gonna want to go 100 percent against that player that's gonna take them over. Come on, bro. They're not. They're good enough. Like they know. They know. That's why they're veterans. That's why they're starters. not everyone is a Tom Brady of their team, bro. You need to understand that. Like we're talking about defense. <clears throat> you're going against people that get recycled over and over and over again. Not everyone is going to be that defensive star, that cornerback of the season. So they're going 100%. Not everyone is going to go ahead and the, not everyone is the Khalil Mack of the season. Not everyone's the number one paid defensive player of the fucking season. They're not going to go ahead and be like, oh, I just need to go 80% because I already have a five-year contract. No. You have the star players going against the defensive players that need to actually go ahead and go for the position. You're making it sound like the offense is going up against the offense. No, you have the offense going up against the defense. If we know this, defensive players are always battling for their positions. And that's why even if it's a fucking backup, they're going against a backup, even though they're the ones on the battlefield, because they need to know that they need to prove themselves on those couple of snaps. No, oh, yeah, something will, but... That doesn't matter. Like, like the starter. Like, they say the backup's going against the top receiver. The receiver's not gonna go out. The backup could go hardcore, but it's not gonna show how good he is. And the coaches know it. Dude, the fucking receiver, the fucking defensive player is gonna go all out, which is so why I'm saying he's gonna go out. But it still is, is, it's not. It doesn't as matter as much as you think. It matters. <laughs> I don't I think, think it, it does. And, and it, I think you're completely it, fucking wrong. It does matter. It matters for the undrafted rookies and the rookies. And that's what I'm saying. It matters for them. But the veterans who are majority of the team are veterans. There's only a handful of rookies. And it does matter because they're the ones that could be positioned against them because well, they, and they do have, again, and the most defensive of the time, players. The top rookies are going to play, are playing the first quarter or maybe half of the game. The other ones who are fine for this play the late quarters where none of them are playing no more. Maybe a and, few here and there. And but. again, which is why I'm still saying that the first couple of snaps are still worth more than a practice snap, which is what I'm trying to say. To me, it's not worth it for somebody to get hurt. That's what I say. And what, and what I'm saying is that those couple of snaps... Are still worth more than a practice snap. Nah, I don't think it's worth more. Not like. And, and uh, again, I think it is. We, we, we can go back and forth between this all fucking day, but it's going to be, again, it goes back to opinion, and I think we're never ever going to get anywhere, which is probably best if we move on to something else. <laughs> well, I mean, you guys have been kind of fighting each other for a good while. Man. We're already. Hey, it's friendly banter, man. That's, <laughs> we, 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 you know, Papi Ray. Loves garbage. Garbage loves Poppy oh, Ray. So and Desi loves everybody. Oh, Poppy, you're gonna be the moderator for us oh. next time. We're gonna we're gonna be our own undisputed. Next I would time. be a horrible moderator. <laughs> I would just let you guys keep fighting. Fuck moderating. Mm-hmm. I just I, I just want to watch everything burn. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, no, I mean you you guys uh, had. A, a good conversation. I didn't want to really jump into it. I didn't have very much to add to it, so I let you guys go at it. Fuck it. Yeah, that's what this is all about, right? Like, it's all friendly banter. Like, we're having a couple of beers, whiskeys, and every other rich and rare shot around there. Yeah, that, uh, that that's more like one of the things that, especially now, is kind of like dying out. Like, you can't have a discussion and, and disagree without people getting mad. You know, and that's actually one of the things that I've I've, um, I've learned from Clon, right? I uh, uh, straight up, I love Clon only because this is the guy, the kind of guy that you can be almost pretty much in each other's face, telling each other off, and the next day we're gonna go back to drink because that's the kind of respect we have for each other. Like I, like I'm never gonna go back and say you know that Papi Ray's an idiot because he defends his position and I'm defending mine. And I think at one point we acknowledge that it's gonna come back to, to opinion until it comes back to actual facts. Like if he can prove me that like with actual stats that this has been proven, I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, bend over to him. <laughs> 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 because I'm, at one point, I'm going to admit that I'm wrong, and I think that that's the kind of maturity that all of us have. Like, even you, Desi, like, I think at one point you would say, like, there's some times where you shut the hell up because... There's nothing that you can add or you, yeah. you know, you've admitted to the point where like, you know what, I got burned or same thing with me, right? And I think that's what makes really great, uh, even though as as uh, corny as this might sound, that's what makes long friendships happen, yeah. right? Like We've known each other for what, almost uh, a decade, a decade and a half. Something like that, yeah. And we've told each other off so many times. We kicked <laughs> each other's asses. We've tackled, picked up in the air, ble- made each other bleed so many times, but we come back because, you know what, at the end of the day, we still have the re- that respect for yeah. one another. I, I think the the thing that makes uh, a, a good friend or just even a good person to talk to mm-hmm. is, uh, like, knowing that your opinion isn't directed at me, right? Mm-hmm. Like, people take things too personally. For me, like if you can shit talk somebody, and yeah, it can get heated or whatever. But like twenty minutes later, you guys are just shooting the shit again. Like that, that's uh, like that's a win, right? Like that's a, mm-hmm. a plus. Like you're not friends unless you bust each other's balls. Oh hell yeah! And I, I if, agree with if that. If you can't take that, well, I mean, I guess you can just get out. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're... I've I've lost. A long, a long time fucking friendship over some petty bullshit. And, uh, like, this person w- was a, like, really big part of my life. And they, si- they decided that uh, I was too toxic, apparently. The so, I, I don't know. Uh, whatever, I guess. Uh, have a good life. I don't, I don't, I don't wish anything bad upon you. Like, you're, you're a really good friend of mine for fucking 20 years. But uh, if you're willing to just walk out on that, well, good luck finding somebody else that's got your back that long. The biggest epiphany that comes from something like that is that even after they're gone, life still goes on the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, fucking, uh, I, I wrote something down when I realized that. Like, Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. Cause oh, we're I, going into Desi... Uh... Uh, <laughs> personal, Desi, uh, personal, mode. Mode. Yep, yeah, personal personal mode. Uh, yeah, fucking no. Uh, it was just a, uh, what? Let me six six words. It put mm-hmm. opening my eyes broke my heart. Interesting. And take that for what you will, but uh, I thought that was uh, the best way to describe how I felt at the moment. And uh, I'm an adult. I'm a grown ass man. I'm not gonna fucking bitch like a little high school kid whatever it happens I was born alone I'm gonna die alone it's a lot of those things like uh, you lose people that were actually and I don't I don't wanna put down the, the that person that you're talking about like if you lose people that actually were there for your whole life whether it was your mom your grandma your dad and your life continued on anybody else that you met for two years three years five years whatever it is it was it's still always going to be a, a lower amount than someone that actually was there for your whole life. Yeah. So, um, obviously, I met a, um, amazing people in my life. Um, I want to I want to actually add you guys to the list. I um, mean, how, how long have it been since I had been talking to you, Desi, before... Before we started you know, talking getting, again? Yeah. Before we started talking again on the, on the podcast. And the, the thing is that even after... You know, five, six, seven years, we were still able to continue where we left off, and I think that either shows you the maturity from the other person, and and the relationship that we had. We know that hey, we we were tight with each other, we respected each other, uh, even with Poppy Ray. I know, like, we always disagreed, right? <laughs> uh, and, no, no, but that's the thing that that I love that because when I was put in my place i loved it because like you know what made no no, i I really did right like whether it was either getting bent over or actually walking away with the the winners with the the winner flag right um i'm about to continue this bitch (laughs) (laughs) but it was always um it had to do with the music or i don't think the last time that um poppy ray and i argued 
I actually sided with uh, our friend Glon, right? That one of the downsides with music, right? With uh, rock, I actually did side with Glon was that uh, one of the biggest things about rock, and I think one of the double-edged stories about rock was that we have so many genres that sometimes we don't even know who the fuck to side with yeah. or, or what or to look what, for, what right? What the versus fuck is rap. what anymore? Yeah. Yeah, what is versus rap, everybody considers rap just rap. At that point, we were trying to distinguish between trap and rap. But at this point, even trap is no longer a term that's used that much. We just still just hear it's, it's rap, it's rap, it's rap, it's rap. Uh, the only ones that are trying to fight, fight it right now are like the purists within the rap community. We're just still trying to distinguish between trap, rap, and mumbo rap and everything else. But you don't hear mumbo rap as a term anymore because it was already accepted as a rap category. Uh, I don't know. Is it? I think it well, is. Because... Now we got emo rap. Look at that. Uh, but how long is it going to be? It becomes, it becomes like, oh, uh, well, it, we don't give it, a shit. It's still considered rap. Emo rap is the biggest thing right now. Where it's a, it's a, it's a going up. But if anything that. has taught us in the last couple of years is that eventually rap is still falls under rap. Where with, the, with us, you're gonna have different artists that are gonna try and grow into that genre, but, and they're gonna and they're gonna engulf in themselves in that genre. I don't versus... know because if I talk to some young people and they stay, they're the they they the ones who put it different. Yeah, More but than, it, than it's, we. it's we're the it's, ones who still call it rap because we just know it as rap. But it's, uh, it's, I feel like the the young people are the ones who call it different, and they that's how they say it. Like, I think it's gonna take a couple of years before they adapt because it's it, hap- it happened with trap, and it happened with a couple of other like mumbo rap, right? Like you know, little Uzi, little everybody else. Now they're no longer we're no longer trying to distinguish them with mumbo rap or anything else. And the only reasons again, like you said. The younger community, I have a, a friend that is 22, 23 years old, co-worker. Um, he doesn't call him rap anymore. He just calls it rap. And anybody else, not just recognize Lil Uzi, Lil Vert, and everybody else, they're just, were rap. They were just considering a different style, but they're still under rap. And if anything has that we have learned in the last couple of years, at least personally, is that I think it takes a couple of years before the rap community accepts it as part of its own versus trying to distinguish it. This is with us, with the rock community. We're still trying to distinguish it uh, differently. Like we're still going to call it either emo rock or, you know, progressive rock or whatever new type of um, diversive or self category of rap that we consider. If anything that I've seen is that rap eventually ends up including all types of rap under as a style versus trying to consider it a zipper wrap. Okay, so for me, that's when when it's like more elements than just rap. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's when it goes under the term hip-hop. Because rap is hip-hop, but hip-hop mm-hmm. isn't rap. Yeah. And Interesting. Yeah, like... Ah, fuck, I don't know how to describe it. Like, hip-hop is like... Like Drake, Drake is hip hop, right? When he started, mm-hmm. he did more singing than he did rapping, right? But he did it to uh, like rap style beats and shit. I mean, technically, he was closer to R and B than he was rap, but because he had rap elements, it's considered hip hop. So I, I mean, music in general is always gonna have its labels, and I I don't think that hurts it. Uh, th- it's just easier to find what you like that way. I I think I think, I, I actually will agree with you on that. Only when people don't try to categorize themselves under that category. Yeah. Like I think I think that in rock, we we find a lot of groups that try to categorize themselves under that, and they only go with that style. And I think with rap artists that I've been seeing is that they start ex- they don't just stick to that one style. They started hitting almost everything, everything in between, which is kind of hard to categorize. Uh, that artist, yeah, they might begin with like you know emo rap or whatever um, subcategory it is, but then eventually their style ends up going back to everything, and 
that's where they end up in like, hey, by the way, I started with emo rap, but right now, uh, I engulfed everything the rap is. And I think it's one of the biggest examples that was used at one point was Kid Rock, right? You can't categorize Kid Rock because Kid Rock is that kind of once in a lifetime musical genius that <laughs> what? Six, uh, uh, I'm using it as lightly, right? Hold on, hold on. Did you call Kid, Kid Rock a musical genius? Um, okay, let me finish my thought. <laughs> Is that artists that can try different styles and can get at least one hit that hits that musical category right where it's at, right? Whether it's something that we like or not, um, whether it's country, whether it's uh, rock, alternative, uh, rap, they hit at the very least one song where it hits right on the spot. Not that everything after that can compare, but um, I like using Avenged a lot, right? Uh, Avenged did one country song or two, actually. Uh, one of them sounded okay. The other one sounded okay. This is what country should sound like. <laughs> it, means that, it means that I can explore that. Would I call them a country band? No. But I definitely understand that they have different ranges for it. And I think Kid Rock, if you go to several songs and you were to play for somebody that is new, they would not be able to tell you that it's a different artist. Which means that they understand the genre and they can adapt to different music styles. Which why I say the word genius. They understand <laughs> and they're able to interpret uh, that style. <sighs> well, Come at me, bro. Come at me. I don't think I have to. You called Kid Rock a musical genius. Oh, Just because you change the style doesn't mean you're a genius. No, but it means that you're able to do more than just one thing, right? For example, I, we see... A lot of people do more than just one thing. It but, doesn't mean they're a genius. But do they succeed? For example, I know that we talked sure. about it last week, right? Just because K-Rock had one or two hit songs, yeah, he, he made it. In different genres. He, yeah. Kind yeah. Of. Yes, because it means that they understand the style. How many artists don't we have them try? Well, actually, oh, yeah, he understands the style to cover two songs. Yeah. Get out of here. Which means they understand, right? And then we well, have like people for like disturbed, right? <laughs> I want to use desecrators. Uh, he worst covered a song, a, 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 like a real number one song. He covered it, and he makes and, him yeah, a genius because he understood to cover a fucking hit song. He get covered the fuck a song, out of here. but he tried multiple styles and he did it. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Only because he tried more than multiple one. But again, for example, uh, desecrator hates disturbed. He hates the sound of silence, right? <laughs> For me, I like the guy, and I'm actually considering the guy to be, you know, really great because he was able to interpret different styles of music. But to Desecrator, that's fucking hot garbage, like me, right? So, <laughs> come at me, Desecrator. Come yeah. at me. Uh, I, I, it's not that I don't like Disturbed. I just hate the sound of silence. <laughs> <laughs> You know, hate... we're talking about a lot of hard garbage. Can I... you show us what hard garbage is? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> With your mom. With your mom. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I, th like, I, I think we're fucking that? done with that already. <laughs> <laughs> save it to next week. Yeah. <laughs> I guess... a lot of shit today. I guess Get with that, side. we'll just go ahead and skip uh, your mom. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> don't worry, we'll, we'll cover your mom next week. Oh, but yeah, I'm I, looking forward to it, puppy. I want to go ahead and thank uh, our guest, Garbage. Uh, it's always fun. It's always easier to have a third man. So yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Uh, is is there anything, way, anything you want to promote or? Uh, honestly, no, man. I um, I've always been like uh, the only thing that I want is you know next week get us some. Really badass albums or really garbage albums to cover. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll stop by and get something. You know, get all of that uh, two dollar, three dollar uh, clearance bin. Hell yeah! You know? Hell uh, yeah! I'll, 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 I'll even fund you some of it mm. if you want, <laughs> <laughs> so we can at least have like five or six albums for the next two oh, months. Nah, you don't, you don't have to fund it. They're like three dollars. <laughs> oh, it's okay, man. It's still fifteen bucks. 
true that. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, um, well, other than that, man, uh, random thought out to anybody. And I guess it's the first time that I do it. Uh, difference of opinions doesn't mean that the people are no longer part of your life. Just means that respect one another. Because I think that that's one of the things that, you know, Papi Ray and the Secretor and, you know, Garbage have had in common. We come from different worlds. I come on from a, a cumbia and Mexican kind of music kind of world. And they fucking hate it, right? Or to some extent, they dislike it. Uh, but they understand the musical aspect of it that I find appealing. And uh, prior to me liking Tool, I fucking hated, uh, you know, Puppies Ray music decisions. But yeah. eventually, I give it a chance, and and I give Tool a chance, and you know, I like it nowadays. So who knows? You might find out. You, something you didn't you give like. it a chance because of me. You gave it a chance because. Oh wow 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 wow! wow. First, I remember that. Uh, we'll, we'll, Wait, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Okay, okay. Now, now you got me curious because, like, I'm trying to remember who the fuck you're talking about. I don't let, remember. Let, let's save this conversation for another day. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. So yeah, I, I just want to thank Garbage for joining, uh, Puppy. I always love it when you're here by, by my side. Mm. <laughs> Is there anything you want to bring up or mention or anything? Uh, yeah, we don't need preseason. We just need practice. <laughs> anyway, I'm your boy Desecrator. This was hanging heavy. Thank you for staying tuned to this long episode. As always, stay safe. Clean your butt. Uh, oh, well. Fucking uh, do something good for somebody. Double ply. <laughs> Get up a day. As always, <laughs> much love and rich and rare. This is hanging heavy. heavy.